Pirigalo, nun, carigalo, nun, narigalo, nun. Wadeo, tarro, pura. That was a mangrove song, a water song, welcoming you here to this country. And it was taught to me by my auntie. My name is Shannon Foster and I'm a Dharawal saltwater woman. I'm an Indigenous Education Officer here at Sydney Olympic Park. So I come from a long line of really amazing Aboriginal people from here in Sydney. Our people have lived in the Botany Bay and Sydney region for as long as we know. So going back into the history of this site, the European colonisers came down the Parramatta River within 10 days of arrival in Sydney Cove. They were looking for fertile land and they came down the river and they found this beautiful estuarine area known that they called the Flats. And as the years progressed, this soon became a very industrial area. It was industry as far as the eye could see in this particular spot. This stretch of river is probably one of the filthiest in Australia. It's full of floating debris, oil slicks. So by the 70s, we became more aware of the importance of these mangroves. And there was news reports about the toxins in the water and about the remediation of the site here. The three councils want it turned into a bicentennial park. Homebush Bay is one of the very few wetlands left in metropolitan Sydney. So the mangroves were definitely being remediated and being managed by the 1980s. So the word we use, we say the word wadao. Can you all say wadao? So my role in protecting the mangroves here is to educate. And it's all in the pursuit of the awareness of these mangroves and this natural environment. There is a little Dharawal boy called Garrigan. And Garrigan liked to weave and make things for his family. All the kids in Dharawal families learnt how to weave and make string. And he was weaving with this fantastic grass called Lamandra grass. Now this is amazing stuff. It grows everywhere throughout Sydney and throughout our wetlands here. It's really tough. You can't break it. We teach up to 30,000 students a year, everything from kindergarten, even sometimes preschoolers, right up to year 12 students. And lucky for Garrigan, right next to Lamandra grows a beautiful plant called Dianella. So before you approach those low bushes, you should always stomp three times so that you can let Garrigan know that you're there and you won't scare him. And he doesn't scare you! <laughs> what do you think? Does it feel good? Soft, but then there's also got like these like different... That's right. It's weird, isn't it? And you can even touch under his tummy there. So the mangrove ecosystem is vital in providing food for human beings. It all starts when the leaf litter hits the mud and the sediment and starts to break down and decompose. It decomposes with the help of algae and fungi. It starts to break down and then a little range of all sorts of little organisms will come out and eat those decomposing leaves, things like crabs and snails. And this here is the prettiest poo on planet Earth. It's mangrove snail poo. As you can see, the forest floor is wet and squishy. It's full of algae and has a beautiful microfilm. And that's what the snail eats. See how there's all little sticks popping up out of the mud over there? Yeah. Those little sticks are really important to the mangroves. So in your garden, all the roots of your plants are under the ground. But here in the mangrove forest, the roots grow up out of the mud. There are amazing roots that can bring oxygen down into the mud and into the main cable roots of the tree. They're called pneumatophores, which means carrier of breath. They're really, really clever roots because they can also block out salt in the water. The water that's feeding in here into these mangrove ecosystems is actually coming from the ocean. So as the water comes in, it brings the fish in. And as the fish come in, they breed and they lay eggs. And the babies wash up here into the mangrove ecosystem. And that's where they can grow up without being eaten by bigger fish. So who likes to have fish and chips at the beach on Sunday? Well, if you like having fish and chips at the beach on Sunday, then you've got to make sure you look after your mangrove ecosystem. Because about 80% of the fish that we catch and eat out in the ocean has been a baby and grown up out in mangrove ecosystems just like this one. So this is one of my favourite views, and that is looking out over the mangrove forest facing north. And to the east, about 12 kilometres, you'll have Sydney Harbour and the, where the ocean comes into the water system here. Parramatta River is out there to the north. You can see a little tiny glimpse of it out over there. And then out west is further into the western suburbs of Sydney, like Parramatta.
of the oldest trees in the mangrove wetlands here. We estimate it's probably up to about 200 years old. Now these mangroves are really important to me. My great grandfather walked these wetlands and harvested wood here, the elbows and the knees from the mangroves and would make boomerangs out of them. And the boomerangs that he would make would be sold down in La Perouse as part of the tourist trade there. Tom Foster is my great grandfather. He was around in the 1920s and 1930s here in Sydney. He was an activist, a performer and an artist. So this is a La Perouse boomerang and I was extremely fortunate to find a whole lot of his boomerangs have been sold all over the world and I found an auction house that was auctioning off a couple of his boomerangs and I was fortunate enough to be able to win one. The kangaroo facing backwards is really common in my great grandfather's work and the emu facing backwards. The emu especially, people would call it a headless emu but it's not headless, it's just very highly stylized, but facing backwards is a representation of the idea that we need to look backwards, we need to look to our past to know and to understand our future. So this place is to me a really beautiful haven and it speaks to me of times gone past and it speaks to me also of survival and resilience because these mangroves and this natural wetlands here has survived despite every single effort to wipe it out. Well,